The first era. Trigger warnings. Abuse. Non-graphic suicide attempt. Almost alcoholism. Non-graphic self-harm mention. Lover. While I am not blind to Taylor Swift's imperfections, her music has been part of my life since I was so young. I didn't know songs had artists attached to them. I thought people made a song or two in their day and went about their lives. That was before Hannah Montana, before I decided I myself would be a rock star. I am now a scared writer with amusia, or tone deafness. I will still be a musician, I just don't know when. Dear me, future me, me in a year from now, 2025 me, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're still alive because I can't bear the thought of your friends losing you. I hope you're still alive because I've already lost one of us. I can't lose you too. My lover rubs my back at night. I fall asleep with his palm over my skin and thoughts of the day it will be empty air. I can't seem to see anything without seeing a goodbye attached these days, and I cry to my fiancé. I cry to him saying, as Taylor Swift does, help me hold on to you. We've lived a lifetime of losing and losing and losing, and there's nothing scarier for me right now. To have BPD is to know their love is temporary. To have BPD is to, as Taylor puts it, cut off your nose just to spite your face and hate your reflection for years and years. We punish ourselves, we hate ourselves, we put ourselves through hell and wonder why we see the devil in the mirror. And I still snap at my fiancé. That, I think, is the excuse. You see the devil because you're mean to the ones you love. You're ready for combat, but are you? I don't want that, Taylor says, but what if I do? To have BPD is to be ready for combat, to want it, to hate it, to loathe it, to crave it. To only feel safe in a hurricane. Help me hold on to you. And in The Archer, Taylor Swift says, I've been the archer, I've been the prey, screaming, who could ever leave me, darling, but who could stay? Who could stay when I cut off my nose just to spite my face and then hate my reflection for years and years, when I avoid streets full of broken memories, when I love you is the worst thing you've ever heard? And she says all the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put me back together again because all of my enemies started out friends. Help me hold on to you. My fiancé rubs my back at night. My best friend produces songs for me. But every time I go to bed, I prepare for the morning they'll leave. Because the morning will come, rattling like a fact in my head, a reminder of my past friends turned enemies haunting the walls of my brain. The morning will come, just as it always does. Folklore. It's been three years since five months changed my life. Three years, five months. A lifetime of remembering. I often think, as Taylor puts it, who knows if I never showed up what could have been. I think about Chicago trains I'm too scared to board, Walmart superstores I'll never enter. I don't believe in capitalism, but I'd rat him out for stealing. But I acknowledge that I am not an innocent. I had my hand in the ship going down as minute as it was, as much as it was self-defense and desperate, desperate longing to be understood and cared for. I did things I am not proud of. I nearly drove myself to alcoholism just so someone would understand something was wrong. Maybe that would work if I had the audacity to try it today, surrounded by people who care for and love and want me, but it didn't back then. They just let me drink. I remember that point in my life like you'd remember any point in your life when you felt out of your mind. I feel out of my mind today, right now, writing this essay, but I felt out of my mind too then in a different way. They insulted me for not making sense when I stated facts about my feelings. They criticized me for not being as talented as they were. They put down my love of writing, my love of my friends, my self-worth, my art, my love of romance, my loneliness, and my music taste. This was before I rediscovered Taylor Swift. I'm glad they couldn't ruin her for me. I remember that time like you'd remember going to hell and emerging different.
still, I know what they think. As Taylor puts it, he had a marvelous time ruining everything. And what a marvelous time I had crying myself to sleep at 2 p.m. What a marvelous time I had begging to be understood with simple concepts and boundaries. What a marvelous era in my life it was working 60 hours a week and living at the hotel just to stay away from home, from hell. What a marvelous time I had being abused by him. But to you, 2025 me, you've sung along at this point maybe 500 times to who knows if I never showed up what could have been. I had a marvelous time ruining everything with tears cascading. But have you ever considered? Who knows if he never showed up what could have been. He had a marvelous time ruining everything. Red. This one, as you may know me, might be a long one. I chose one song, as I did with the others, but for this one I chose All Too Well, 10 minute version, from the vault. You understand why. Because you, as Taylor Swift does, remember it all too well. Remember the threats, and the psychiatric hospital, and the yelling, and the gaslighting, and all of it. You remember it all too well. You might always. You fell in love with a girl I won't name, for privacy, I guess. You wrote a poem about dry Cheerios and Petrichor because that's what he ate every morning and her hair reminded you of the rain-soaked soil and the smell after. And you still remember it all too well. You remember the comments, how they introduced you to their friends as a rescue. We write that down every time we talk about it. It never gets old. I wish it would get old. Has it gotten old? Because, as she puts it, you kept me like a secret, but I kept you like an oath. And no, this is not directed at you, 2025 me, no, it's directed at you, elephant in the room, ringleader of the circus of wolves, siren of the sea, you. I always hear that line and think of her, Lady of Petrichor, but it's you, I think, that haunts me. Because while her lovers may stay our age, while we grow older, you are the one who brought me in in the first place. You are the one who was constantly and evermore casually cruel in the name of being honest. You were fire and ice, you were rage and indifference, you were pain and surgery and therapy and recollection and pain, so much pain, and now to you, 2025 me. Is it gone? Is it gone? Is it gone? Because Taylor and I, we remember it all, all, all and she says the idea you had of me who was she a never needy ever lovely jewel whose shine reflects on you whose shine reflects on you whose shine reflects on you i was not a person to you no i was a diamond you showed off only to the friends who cared about diamonds i was the rescue you showed off only to the friends who had a soft spot for strays I was nothing to you until an outside force made me everything. And two years later, I had a birthday I no longer remember. Because I spent it in my head. In that house. Near the college. In my room. Crying myself to sleep at 2 p.m. And Taylor's dad said, It's supposed to be fun turning 21. But I was so lost in trauma and flashbacks and pain, there was no fun in being 21, and there's been few and far between fun in being 22, so tell me, 2025 me, is there any fun in being 23? As Taylor puts it, I'm trying to be my old self again, but I'm still trying to find it. I don't know who I am. I've experienced trauma longer than I have memories, and I have never been my truest, calmest, most loving, and empathetic self. I pray I will one day be, but in this tiny town's barren cold, I can't remember the first fall of snow. Because I looked outside one day, and it was there. Evermore. 
before the snow was a lifetime of being trapped inside that house, and sometimes I still feel that way. Like the walls of the past encase the plaster surrounding me now, here, April 27, 2025, as I write this section, trapping me. I, Miss Taylor, put this right where you left me. She says, everybody moved on. I stayed there. I stayed there because the feeling in my legs were gone, and the road had crumbled to nothing, and the signs were blurred over, and the sun had vanished. Everybody moved on. I stayed there. She says, they expected me to find somewhere, some perspective, but I sat and stared right where you left me. You left me. You left me. I walked out. You left me. And I just have to say to 2025 me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it took this long to connect with that little girl we used to be, to resurrect her and apologize for abandoning her. And I'm sorry you're probably still cleaning up the work. But I will pave a way as smooth as I can so we never stay stuck right where they left us. Speak now. I guess you really did it this time, left yourself in your war path, lost your balance on the tightrope, lost your mind trying to get it back. Taylor Swift in the song Innocent on her Speak Now album. This is a song that has been with us for so long. As someone with BPD, I've made a lot of mistakes. Mistakes I wasn't in control of, and mistakes I was. She talks about lunchbox days, and I think about going to elementary school with a deadly nut allergy. A whiff of peanut butter, and I'd be dead if not immediately treated. My mother cried on my first day of school, begging them not to let me die. The same mother who wouldn't take me to the hospital after an attempt in which I utilized such an allergy. I don't know if she was different back then, to be honest, or just trying to look good. I'll never know. September 30th, 2021. We both remember what happened that day. The attempt and where and how we weren't thinking, we were just hurting. People don't instinctively think when they're hurting. You have to try, you have to force it. I didn't know it back then, and it almost cost me three lives. But I'll have new Septembers, as Taylor says, and time turns flames to embers. She says, your string of lights is still bright to me. You're still an innocent. Fearless. At 15, my plan was to have a car, an apartment in a different state lined up, and everything I needed to move out immediately on my 18th birthday. I spent my days as a 15-year-old watching Sandersides for the first time, being manic and baking cookies every three days being screamed at by my stepdad, throwing vodka out before my mom could drink it, other things included, you remember. Cause, as Taylor puts it, when you're 15 and somebody tells you they love you, you're gonna believe it. Well, I believed them. I believed any old thing I heard. And to tell you the truth, I still believe people when they say they love me. But I'm starting to pick up on evidence, and I feel like that might be a start. I found time, she's told me time and time again, can heal most anything. All I can do is pray she's correct. Midnights. Let's check in, 2025 me. How are you? Are you feeling better? And has she returned? That little girl who cried when she broke Kirsten's leg? That girl who cried when Molly was so adorable in her doll hat and coat. The girl who cried when she was completely alone. Has she returned? Everything I touch becomes sick with sadness, Taylor says, and boy do I feel that these days. I'm sobbing throughout the day, every day, and my fiancé and best friend are only human, can only take so much. I don't understand why they don't feel the crushing, debilitating, bone-breaking loss of that little girl we all were at one point. And they don't completely understand why it's tearing me apart. Neither do I. I mean, it's unlivable. I can't do anything. I was on two milligrams of clonzepam writing this essay. Tell me, you, reading and recording this, are you on two milligrams of clonzepam? Let's go off script for a second. I am not on two milligrams of clonzepam. 
because I took it this morning. Because that's how badly I needed it. And I can't take it again. So I'm gonna smoke a lot of weed. And that's the answer to that. Did some force, Taylor and I ask over and over again until our throats are raw, take you because I didn't pray? Because there has to be an answer. For all of this, there has to be one. Truth be told, this was meant to be an optimistic essay towards my future self. This was meant to be about the present, current events. Remind myself how far I've come. But I have to start somewhere, and this is the foundation I've chosen. I'll leave this section with these words from Taylor. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. You were bigger than the whole sky. You were more than just a short time. And I've got a lot to pine about. I've got a lot to live without. I'm never gonna meet what could have been, would have been, what should have been you. The Tortured Poets Department. We're reaching the end now. Thank you for sticking with me. This was a hard album to choose a song from, but this is what I ended up with. Let's see if you can recognize it. Taylor says this. What we thought was for all time was momentary. She sets the song up like a death, and it is in a way, but not just a death, not a suicide or an accident, a murder. And in my eyes, this song is talking about me, and I do not blame the murderer. I felt a glow like this, never before and never since. She talks of all the reasons she loved him, loves him, and I can't stop. I can't stop thinking about my lover, how he flaps his hands when he's excited and has no volume control and wants to cook way more than he does and needs more self-worth and rubs my back until I cry myself to sleep at 2 p.m. I fear I will lose him and I fear I cannot love anyone or anything more than I love him. I'm terrified. She says, you shit talked me under the table, talking rings and talking cradles. I wish I could unrecall how we almost had it all. I imagine us there, we're there, but one panic attack too many and he breaks and we lose it, we lose it all. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed, not when we're dead. And Taylor says this, she says, Our field of dreams, engulfed in fire, Your arsons match, your somber eyes, And I'll still see it until I die. You're the loss of my life. And all I can think is, I do not blame him. 1989. Years have passed since I've been actively hurt. The urge to do it myself is stronger than ever. In Taylor Swift's song, Clean, she says, You're still all over me like a wine-stained dress I can't wear anymore. I feel their sticky, pungent fluid sticking to my stomach and waist, this once beautiful fabric, now something different. Could I love it anyway? Could I love these broken pieces of me, these scars I inflicted on myself? Could I see them like the trans boy tattoo? Maybe not accurate, but a part of my journey and thus a part of who I am and thus a part to be cherished if no longer encouraged? I'm waiting for the day. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the day the rain comes pouring down and I drown to breathe and when I resurface and I can finally say, I think I am finally clean. Reputation. I ended the tortured poet's department on a bummer, but here's the truth. I am on two milligrams of clonzepam as of writing this. I have no anxiety. I have smoked marijuana. My fiancé and I will be together forever, as long as we listen to each other. As long as we remember we love each other, as long as I do what I can to take care of him in return, he will not leave me. Because though Taylor and I want their midnights, we will be cleaning up bottles on New Year's Day, because life is simply not full of those midnights. And it's why we stay when it's hard or it's wrong or we're making mistakes, as she says. 
So, using Taylor's words, my darling, please, don't ever become a stranger. I truly don't think I can love something more than I love this little house we have and everything in it, everyone in it, and if you were gone, I would fall apart. But I know we do not have forever, so I will take Taylor's advice. I will hold on to the memories, and they will hold on to me, and I will hold on to you. And to you, the one this was for in the first place. Sorry I got carried away. To you, 2025 me, you better still be alive. To you, 23 or 24 year old me, are you excited? Don't you dream impossible things? Because while people can leave or die or change their minds, I will be here. As Taylor puts it, you and me, forevermore.